His film, I'm Not Here, which is in theaters and on demand today, and talk about only those subjects. <laughs> Huh. J.K. Simmons back here on the Rich Eisen Show. Weird. I, I remember this. Remember this show being a little more all-encompassing. <laughs> in the, uh... you know, it's it's funny. It's baseball it's, only. It's, yeah, weird. You know, it's yeah. not baseball huh. only. Yeah, yeah. It's pop culture yeah. baseball only. Yeah. How are you? I am fine, <laughs> despite the prospects for my baseball team this year. It was nice to see a little a little, little Mags school. flashback Mags there. Mags flashback. Jim Leland, Leland giving the one to the wife and kids, and yeah, it's a beautiful. You thing. know, way back in the day, you've got the old English D on the top. I have right the now. the away the cap because I'm away from Detroit. Oh, I like that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, like watching the kids. I don't know. I mean, you know, Miggy said he's he he's envisions finishing his career there. You never know. Oh, please, right? yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, he uh, came out and said that, I think, just a couple of days ago. Miggy and the kids. It's, it's, Miggy uh, and I mean, it's, it's, And there's, you know, it, uh, there's something to be said for watching, you know, watching the prospects. Well, you you like, never know, though, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's their. That's the 2019 Detroit Tigers. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you might win a ball game. <laughs> that's working out for the Lakers, right? You got an all-timer. Uh, yeah. You got an all-timer. And then the kid. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. All right, so let's get to it. All right, All right switching hats. <laughs> Off goes the Tigers. There goes the Ohio State hat. Man of many hats, J.K. Simmons. Thank you. Last time you were here. You're like, I don't think so. I don't know. I feel bad. I don't like it. I, I, 60 plus points later, <laughs> look at you oh like a Cheshire goodness. Cat back here on the show. I, and I cannot say I did not think of you during <laughs> during that trouncing. I was like, God, if I had just gone in there and been super confident and cocky, you know. I don't know. But, I, you know, I, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, nice, I mean, at some point. Yeah. The rivalry oh, gosh. will actually become a rivalry again. I don't oh, know when that oh, might wow. be, but <laughs> oh come on. Now hold on a second. You didn't see it coming. You didn't think it was gonna happen. And it did I happen. thought it would be a, a, a real competitive you know, I did too. football game. I didn't see an that. athletic competition of some it. kind. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, what during that game. Um, I have not seen you since. I'll tell the story. I told it here, but I'll tell you. I'll tell it again for those who uh, will indulge. I saw the way it was matriculating. Yes. And um, repeatedly, <laughs> up and down the field. Let me tell the story. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sixty-two points, J.K. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. So the way it was un, uh, unfolding, um, I had my uh, two of my three kids that were there. Normally. I needed to have my own space and take the kids out, whatever. But they were coming in, and I decided to just throw myself into the love and the nurturing of my children who just wanted to play these games nor normally during a Michigan-Ohio State football game. No time for games. There's only one game, the game. Yeah. This time, though, got down on the floor, played a little you know, matching game with them. I just threw myself into the love of my children. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> that is... Such a touching story. And at the same time, they were learning a lesson in how to lose, which is an important lesson that we all must learn, you know, in life. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You got to learn. You got to learn to keep that stiff upper lip. So um, let me tell you this story as well. J.K. Simmons here on The Rich Eisen Show. At the Super Bowl this year in Atlanta. And... Um, I but I got the uh, the golden ticket invitation from the commissioner of the National Football League, Roger Goodell, to watch in his very nice posh digs in the nice. stadium. And uh, it's but it's assigned seating, so there's two rows of comfy seats, and then the bar seating in the back. I got a bar seat, um, and the person who was sitting right in front of me in the comfy seat, I look down on the piece of paper, and I look at my seat. I'm like, oh my gosh, the person sitting in front of me, Urban Meyer. I've heard of him. <laughs> huh. So I go up to Roger Goodell and I'm like, you know, Commissioner, I know you're a busy man. You're a busy man. I'm sure you're not taking part in the seating chart of, of this affair. But did I do something wrong? Did I piss you off because I need to figure it out? He just looks at me and goes, sit down and enjoy the game. <laughs> I love that. So first quarter, guess who sits down, turns around, says, couldn't have been nicer. Couldn't have been more... Because he's a Buckeye. 
Is that what it is? They're, they're a nice breed of people. Is that right? Yeah. Because I find that um, sometimes <laughs> runs counter to that, that conversation. To I know. Well, no, no, it's weird. It's, so what do you think about Ryan Day now, sir? What do you think now? Uh, Are you a little I, nervous? I'm, you a little concerned? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, relatively unproven, but I, I have a lot of confidence there. I think, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we had Luke Fickle when – when Luke maybe wasn't quite ready, and now he's proven that he is in yes. Cincinnati. And, uh, uh, yeah, I hope uh, you know, it's a brand-new day. I like it. In Columbus. Is that going to be and, the phrase uh, on the on the? Well, that's the phrase on my text chain guy? with the Lang brothers, you know, my, my Ohio State okay. uh, uh, little homies? conspiracy homies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Brand new day. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And you know, always, 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 you're rebooting. You know, we got, what, for sure, two first rounders, uh, uh, maybe maybe more this year. Well, and we well for a, sure, you know. Bosa and, and Haskins are not going to have a very long first night of the draft. Right. That is for sure. Yeah. And then all those kids showing up, and they just blazed a trail down the 40-yard dash line. It was re Dude, Paris and the boys. Yeah. Paris and the boys. Um, and then, unfortunately, that kid, the uh, defensive back, I think Moorhead is his name, he popped a peck the day before. He might have been the fastest one of them all if he was able to run. So um, using all of my professionalism uh, to go yeah. through all this, uh, I found it interesting, though, that Ryan Day's first act was to tell Shiano we're done and then tell Tate Martell we're done, too, and get that kid from Georgia. Yeah. Did that surprise you, too? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and we, we don't know all the inner workings, obviously, but right. uh, he's made a lot of great hires uh, in the meantime. And uh, and like I said, you're always rebooting at a place like Ohio State. So I'm... Uh, I'm all for a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know you are. So, okay, let me get to um, your film, I'm Not Here. Okay, so now you've got another hat. Here we go. <laughs> it's the hat that says, I'm not here. It's fantastic, by the well way. Well done. It's branding... It's props. It's I'm liking it. I'm liking Ask. everything. Okay, so it's a film about a gentleman who relives parts of his life, sometimes um, difficult, other times not so. Joyous. Joyous. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be like me staring at a picture of the John Cooper years at Ohio State and having everything come back to me. About all these wonderful memories and having a of my wonderful life, time, yeah. right? Don't yeah, you yeah, think? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that is that a, there, is that a good analogy? There are aspects of that in the film. <laughs> More of it from my character's perspective would be like you watching the the Jim Tressel years okay. into the Urban Meyer. Years. I see. Yeah. Now we're giving people a great sense of what this film's all about. Absolutely. And uh, your wife directed you in this film. She my wife Michelle Schumacher co-wrote and co-produced and directed and edited the movie. Fantastic. Wow. Yes, and and I believe me, I I I don't know how grown ups do those kinds of things, you know, because sure. I just show up and pretend to be somebody else, right? But, uh, but to wear all those hats was uh, <laughs> get it? Wear I all look those at hats. That. Hey, full circle. Uh, yeah, was a, a, a remarkable achievement, and what it's a beautiful it, movie. What is it like being directed by your wife? It is, uh, as I believe you alluded to uh, earlier, much like Life at Home, <laughs> uh, performing as directed. Um, right. Honestly, in this case, because yeah. because we, uh, my character is very sort of vulnerable and and uh, naked. Yes. Um, uh, and and to be directed by the person that I trust implicitly uh, uh, was was a real blessing in this case. Right. And your daughter appears in the film. Our daughter, uh, who was uh, foolishly determined that uh, she wants to be an actor. Um, uh, I, Michelle and I met doing Broadway, so you know she she had it coming from both sides. There so I guess it was inevitable. She appears very briefly in the movie, just to, you know to get her feet wet. She appeared in a couple of Michelle's short films mm -hmm. when she was a little kid, and our son contributed some music to the soundtrack, which comes from also your side of the family, right? Uh, you're, you're... Yeah, well, yeah, both Michelle and I, you know, come from a musical background, and. Uh, um, yeah, Whiplash was not a complete accident. Well, no, no, I, you, I, I think the, when uh, you came on to talk about that many moons ago and wins ago, um, yeah. that your dad was a music teacher, correct? At the Ohio State University. Right, yeah. so that's why I brought that up. See, yeah, I, 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 have a, I have a photographic memory of your life, <laughs> you know? And my many, many, and many <laughs> victories. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But it's a, it's a neat movie, and people should all seek it out. Um, it's in select theaters and on demand today. And here in, locally, 
Uh, your wife, uh, you and your wife are going to have a Q&A, and that is on Sunday at the Lamely Theater in Santa Monica. Correct? Yes, after the 5.30 screening. Yeah. Okay, so if you're around town here on Sunday, I know we're on yeah. uh, locally here in Los Angeles and throughout the Southern California area, come and uh, go to uh, lamely.com to get tickets to all of that. Um, and, uh, okay, I've got a start bench cut to play with uh, J.K. Simmons here on the Rich Eisen Show, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Here. It's time. Start. Start now. Bench. Just sit down and be quiet. Or cut. Get up. All right, I know this is not your first start bench cut foray on the Rich Eisen Show. You must start one, bench one, and cut one. Okay, yep. here we go. Four uh, items for J.K. Simmons. Again, I'm not here in theaters near you uh, and also on demand today. Let's get to it. First one, if you had to win one game for the college football championship, who would be the coach? Woody Hayes, Urban Meyer, or Jim Trestle? Start bench. Ooh. Cut, J.K. Simmons. Wow. Uh, it, it, it's a toss-up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start Trestle. Really? I'm going to start the vest, and, uh, and I'm going to... And I'm gonna bench Urban, ah. and and I mean you gotta, you know Clemson, you gotta cut Woody, I yeah, because he's, he's we gotta make sure he, that you really he's out of knock control. Up. Okay, yeah, <laughs> really, Jim Tressel, one Dude, game. I, I love Tressel so much. I mean, yeah, and there was you know one game in which he, he was famously you know terrible, the you know the right. the big national championship game in Florida, but but I mean he, he was. He was an Ohio State legend. So you would start Tressel, bench Urban, and tattoo Woody Hayes. I mean, these are not easy choices. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't. He didn't get the tattoo. Okay, yeah. that's okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, I don't know if you heard our um, segment before. All these rule changes in baseball that are being instituted in the uh, Atlanta in the Atlantic yeah. League. You heard about that? Yeah. You don't like some of these? Uh, I don't. Baseball's not broken. Why are we fixing it? Thank you, J.K. Right? I mean, can we just not completely succumb to the lack of attention span of our children? I, Like I said, I don't think it is a time of play or pace of play. It's a quality of play issue potentially in baseball. Well, which, it depends on which issue you're talking about. Right. It's to me. So I've got three, three for you. Start, okay. bench, cut. Pitchers have to face at least three batters. 20-second pitch clock. Add the DH to the National League. Start, bench, cut. Uh, I'm going to start adding the DH, even though I like the distinct difference between leagues because Mm -hmm. I just hate the other two so much. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm I like gonna, that. I'm going to bench the pitch clock, and I'm going to I'm going to cut the. You have to face really? three batters. I mean, I don't mind. There's, the f- there's some strategy in the game, you know, and and I and I I get that there would be a new sort of level of that strategy, but you know, I mean, go get a hot dog during the pitching change. Go to the bathroom. Have a conversation. Put it on pause. Have a conversation with your play on the floor with your kids. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> certainly when there's a blowout being taken. Uh, certainly, place. yes, <laughs> okay. when the contest is uh, one-sided. All right, most obnoxious fans in baseball. Hmm. Oh, start what? bench cut. Yankees, Red baseball. Sox, Cubs. Uh Yankees, Red Sox, Cubs. It actually is close, <laughs> <laughs> but. But I'm not going to not say the Yankees are the most obnoxious fans in baseball. So I'm going to start. starting Yankee fans? I'm going to start in Yankee fans. Oh uh, a, a very close second and ready to jump up off the bench <laughs> at, at any moment would be the Red Sox fans. <laughs> and then, uh, I, I, you know, in honor of my cousin Weed, uh, I will I will bench the Cubs fans. As cousin being cousin who? What's your cousin? My cousin Weed. Okay. <laughs> who's a, a, a lifelong Cubs fan. And, okay. And, you know, you used to have to add the, the term long suffering. Yes, of course. In there. Now, Not but, uh, actually, he and I were at game five in Wrigley. Uh, what, what was that? Two and a half years ago yeah. now when they. Uh, well, when they, they sent it, they made sure to send it back. When they sent it back to Cleveland. Cleveland. And, yeah. You know, they used to say long suffering Red Sox fans too. Not anymore. Yeah, that four was time. fun when we four could time. say that. Uh, no, let me, no, let me, let me dig into this here just for a little quick second. Okay. What's what's so obnoxious about Yankee fans? <laughs> their sort of innate sense of of superiority. They're they're like entitled, like so many of the. I don't know, going down a bad road here. No, just keep going. <laughs> so keep going, many Jake, people you know? in in my children's generation. Yes. You know? Like you're born on third base, you act like you hit a triple. No, I, I, well, All right. I mean, a triple like Joe Girardi over the head of Greg Mannix to win at the time, I think it was World Series Championship 22. It's now up to 27. By the way, I mean, thank like, you, we talk for, thank about you the, for proving the way, the, his the, point. The, the postseason, point? The postseason that, record between all time between Truth. the... Uh, anyway. You got the Tigers? Sorry. We're, we're, we still want everybody to go see I'm, <laughs> yeah, not, I'm here. not Here. Very good. March 8th. Yep. 
an all-time postseason record head-to-head Detroit New York Yankees. All-time? All-time. The Yankees have more. All-time head-to-head Detroit oh. Tigers oh. versus New York Yankees in the postseason. Oh, you went to, I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. Well, you clearly be, do. That would be 2 0 Detroit. Oh, my gosh. It, well, one of which you just showed. Well, Look, you just showed because they after ju- we vanquished the Yankees, then just, we beat the Just because the Yankees constantly have generational talents that grow on trees that come out of the woodwork, like that judge. That they and, buy for a billion dollars no, judge from Sanchez everybody else. Does, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm, I've been trying to avoid asking judge, this last stock yeah, bench cut created by our coordinating producer, Don Bowie, but I will ask it because I love our guest here. <laughs> Judge is hard to not like, by okay. the way. Okay, and I appreciate He is that. an exception to the rule. Okay. <laughs> Last one for, just like Jeter, right? Continue. <laughs> God, I love J.K. Simmons. Hey, where is Jeter More from? Every Come time on. He comes how, you, he comes. how do you grow up a Yankee fan? He's just, there's just something wrong. That's mm. just not right. Mm. God, you're Last such one a great for human. you. <sighs> Michigan coach team you'd want Ohio State to face the most. Jim Harbaugh, Rich Rodriguez, or Brady Hope? <laughs> Start oh, bench cut. Man. Can't believe oh. this is my show. What the heck? So you're, you're talking about well, that I... team up north oh, uh, that is... shall remain nameless. Oh, like, yeah. like It's like saying Voldemort. Um <laughs> So I'm going to start Harbaugh because he is, he is my favorite guy in the universe <laughs> to beat. I mean, even without the silly pants, you know. <laughs> But to beat those pants off of him every... It's like he knew that the Ohio State players, when they beat Michigan... I'm sorry, team up north. When the, when they win that game, that they get the golden pants. is like their little trophy. So he's wearing the golden pants that we can just take right off of him on an annual basis. It's so you delightful. start him. So what? I start him. Um, and then and then a, a really a pretty close second would be Rich Rod. Because he was, he was also hey. very fun to beat. Brady Hoke, I don't know. Uh, He actually just seemed like he was ready to leave. He got the interim. (laughs) We didn't have a headset on, so he didn't know what was happening. He wasn't. I wouldn't want to listen if I was him. Um, Great to see you. (laughs) And you. (laughs) As always, as long as the streak keeps going, it's always going to be fun. No, you this time around, you went like full, you went full like Lou Holtz. I don't think we can do it. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to talk up the opponent, and then all of a sudden, 60 burger later, you're back with a big smile on your face. 62. I mean, who's counting? What do you got over there? I was going to do it as Lou Holtz. I'm not doing it as Lou Holtz. No. Uh, Great to see you, sir. Uh, Again, I'm Not Here is in select theaters and on demand a special film, not just because your wife co-wrote it and directed it, and your, your daughter appears in it, and your son had a lot to do with the music in it. It's just a beautiful film that, you. Uh, you you know, if you're having a midlife crisis, probably not the best film to see, I'll be very honest. No, you know? maybe it is, well, it was, because uh, it, at the end of the day, it's a thoughtful and hopeful and beautiful story. I guess I shouldn't p- uh, be pitching a film saying this is not the movie for you to see. It is the movie for you to see. I apologize. Again, I'm just working through a lot like of stuff. That would be like pitching right from, you know, 62 that, feet, now 6 that's inches that's, or something. That, that is, a, that's nuts. Yeah, come on. That we're moving the mound back two feet. Yeah. Now and let's, let's start have... the ninth inning with the bases loaded. Right. Uh, you know. I mean, well, right. and I don't like the guy on second base. A lot of these these rules. Yeah. But the sixty-two, uh, I think, once half that league comes down with Tommy John surgery because they're trying to figure out what the, the, the extra two feet looks like on their fastball or whatever. Um, but again, I'm not here. Q and A with yes. J.K. Simmons and uh, and your wife Michelle Schumacher uh, on Sunday. Sunday after the 5.30. Right here in Santa Monica. Um, check that out. Um, thank you for coming on, brother. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. All right, sir. Before you leave, J.K. Simmons, if you would not uh, mind indulging, um, I have a symbol here that Mike Del Tufo picked up. Uh, I'd love to. Th- we've been thinking about this every single time. I'm like, can we have him do it? We'd you want me to, to throw it at him and no. see if I can decapitate him? Is that the- <laughs> no, I'd love for you to autograph it. We'll put it up in our studio. Happily. Uh, I'm sure this is not the first symbol you've been asked to autograph, right? That is a true fact. Okay, uh, it, it, it oddly started, uh, I don't know, what, what, four years ago or so. All right, and I guess if you don't mind, um, you know, not quite my tempo or something along those lines, unless you want to personalize it in a way that will make me upset. Am and I, I rushing or am I dragging? It. Am I just rushing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We, this will hold a, a nice place in our studio here. Love it. Since it, 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 the color scheme actually does match. Just kind of match, Much yeah. of everything going on. All right, let's see what it is. There we go. Well, you wrote, as directed. I appreciate yeah. that. Here it is. Yeah. J.K. Simmons is autographed. It. Let's put it there. Not quite my tempo. There it is. Love it. 
Fantastic. Thank you, sir, for doing that. My pleasure. I really appreciate that. All ad lib, by the way. That entire movie was ad lib. Damien didn't write any of that. <laughs> <laughs> People keep giving him all, all this credit, like he's some genius, whatever. <laughs> and you're doing, oh, by the way, let's get this plug in real quick. You're going to be in the, the next season of Brockmire, too, right? Oh, Coming yes, up? I am indeed with the, the lovely with and Hank? talented Hank Azaria. Oh, he's so wow. genius all on right. that show. <laughs> And I, I, yeah, I get to come in and, and uh, sort of recur a few times as a, as a, a guy that uh, Brock Meyer's not a, not my favorite guy. Yeah. Let's, let's put it that way. So you like I play I play Matt the Bat. Matt the Bat. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our favorite thing last year is that we did actually try to drum up the Brock Meyer Brent Musburger feud between the two of them and Musburger played along like he called he in nice he called in and he just started talking about how Jimmy would just get drunk and vomit all over the place <laughs> and he's well he's got a beautiful Bob Costas moment in the in the oh, upcoming I saw that season too. well yeah. the the uh preview came out and uh it's the the reveal that Brock Meyer tells Costas he gave him pink eye in Sochi oh jeez <laughs> I don't want to give away too much more after what? that but it's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. And so are you, sir. Come back anytime. Come back anytime. I shall. Thank you. you. J.K. Simmons, again, check out I'm Not Here coming up tonight. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.